No Country for Old Men, boring. The Great Gatsby, Crybaby. The Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy had the best casting of any book to movie adaptation. In the books, Frank is one of the most boring and drab characters. But in the movies, he might as well be a better picture of a psychopath than Anton ever could be. Whenever he comes into frame, it feels like watching an alternate version of the Joker play out, except this one actually scares me. I'm the laughingest laugher that ever laughed! <laughs> In all honesty, this is one of the most perfectly casted casts ever, and I'm gonna talk about why. With a lot of other good book-to-movie adaptations, we don't really get the luxury of seeing what a bad cast would be. We get Katniss and Peeta, and that's that. But with this trilogy, there is one unfortunate comparison to be made. <laughs> I remember when Devin Bostic posted a video of him reacting to the new cast and he just looked utterly confused. He went on to be an Oppenheimer. Now, I'm not going to spend any of this video criticizing the long haul because I'm pretty sure that's already been done. Actually, I can confirm it was done several times. So now that I've uh, addressed the elephant in the room, we're going to abandon it and just talk about why this cast is so darn good without including their... uh... Parallel. Starting with the main character, Greg, also known as the son of the laugher. now and then I fall apart What's so interesting about Greg's casting is that Zachary actually makes him a lot more expressive than he is in the books. Whether it's because he's an unreliable narrator or just a lazy artist, in the books Greg's face is almost exclusively drawn as a frown. Sometimes he smiles or looks mad, but he mostly has this blank stare. And this is not a weakness on Jeff Kenny's part by any means. It's actually one of the book's most defining artistic choices. At the time, having a protagonist who was most often seen frowning rather than with a traditional smile was very unique, and it added this sort of melancholic attitude that set the book apart from a lot of other graphic novels. However, when it comes to the movie adaptation, Zachary Gordon plays Greg with a range of emotions. Mostly you'll notice how he adds a new layer of shame to Greg when he disappoints his parents, or his disgust at the sight of something like the cheese. In both of these situations, book Greg would have the same face, with no difference in how he reacts to completely different things. Again, this is not an issue, it does a great job of leaving a lot to the reader's interpretation, but by adding new context through his facial expressions, Zachary is able to enhance the original material greatly. Most impressively, you'll notice how he managed to act like he doesn't care about anyone but himself. You see, it's no secret now that Greg Greg is kind of a jerk. Not only a jerk, but a manipulative one, who will say anything to get what he wants. And in the movies, we see this faithfully adapted in how he will easily make up lies on the spot, maintaining a face that is at best blank and worse, faking honesty. It can be pretty entertaining to see how nonchalantly he does this, and the lengths he will go to avoid the consequences of his actions. And while you might think that this would cause the audience to dislike him, I would argue that it actually makes Greg a pretty compelling character, specifically when it fails. In a scene so iconic that streamers are still using it to meme their beef to this day, where Greg finally gets called out. Now, I know everyone likes to praise Robert Capron for this scene, and don't worry, we'll get to him. But first, I want to state why this scene is so well done on Zachary's part, because people don't really talk about it. Just to add a little bit of context, after he impersonated him while scaring a group of kids, Greg had gotten Rally in some pretty hot water, and without putting much thought into it, decided he would confess to him, thinking it wouldn't really be a big deal. At first, he starts off casually, trying to frame it as funny in hopes of getting off easy. When Rally initially calls him out on it, he tries to downplay it as just one thing. But Rally doesn't take it and hits Greg with some pretty difficult truth about his character. As reality hits him, Greg appears to be genuinely devastated, and this is where the casting of him proves to be so great. Through his acting, Zachary was able to make Greg look sympathetic, by reminding audiences that while he is a jerk, he's also just a kid, one trying to navigate adolescence and responsibility the best he can. We're gonna get back into the side of Zachary's acting when we talk about Bostic, but for now, let's talk about Rowley. There is a reason why Rowley is praised for this scene. His performance was so good that people like to say his bills were due the day it was taken. The genuine disbelief behind his face and how he says his lines, Don't call Call me. Don't come by my house. We're done as well as the way he walks away when it's all said and done, makes the scene feel like a real falling out between friends. And this moment is another product of the film's amazing casting. Just like Greg, in the books, Rally is a much less complex character. Unless you've read the extended lore, which I have not, he's basically just kinda naive. At least from what Greg shows us. In the same scene where Greg tells the truth, Rally just kinda looks pissed off, and he doesn't give the speech at all. But because of Robert's ability to act out a more dramatic scene, showing that Rally is actually capable of standing up for himself, the betrayal is infinitely more impactful. The only unfortunate part of about Rally in these movies is that despite being in all three of them, this is really where his character peaks, and he doesn't have any other real dramatic or acting highs after this. But that's perfectly okay considering that this is supposed to be a comedy. However, in a way, he does eventually get his revenge on Greg, even if he doesn't really mean to. You see, in the books, there's not much we know about Rally's family, besides the fact that they shelter him and his dad doesn't like Greg. But in their movies, they're homeschooled Kool-Aid surge with no- 
Kool-Aid with no sugar parenting style gets turned up to 11. Literally in that they act like a cult. It's not that crazy, they just share some ice cream. But coming from his own dysfunctional family, Greg is mortified by this. Just seeing family members being affectionate towards each other is troubling for him. And spending time with them in the third movie becomes his own personal hell. This is where I have to give credit to Alf Humphreys, who is sadly no longer with us. His portrayal of Rowley's dad was incredible, as he turned him into a completely different character. In the books, Rowley's dad is stern and hostile, mostly due to his distrust in Greg. But somehow, Alf and the writers put him in a place where he makes Greg feel guilty in a really funny way. This is seen when the family plays a game called I Love You Because, where they have to say something they like about each other. Greg is supposed to say something nice about Rowley's dad, but he just can't stop drawing blanks. And instead of moving on, Rowley's dad just looks completely heartbroken like Greg just cancelled Christmas. Robert does great here too, acting confused and anxiously awaiting for Greg to come up with an answer. But the way that his dad's first instinct when he's getting tackled by the police is to stare at Greg like he's some kind of evil mastermind is just hysterical. I know this was the of a side tangent, but I really did want to applaud his performance. So let's get back into talking about the main cast. Unfortunately, there's not going to be quite as much to say about Rachel Harris as Susan. She's a great actor and was definitely a good fit, but because she tended to be a more grounded character, she didn't really have quite as many highlights as the rest of the cast. Generally, she just acted as an anchor for the family, keeping Greg and Roderick in line while also making sure that Frank doesn't go off the deep end. In the few scenes where Susan was the focus, Rachel Harris did do a phenomenal job. Mom Bucks, as well as I'm Sorry Women, are both great examples of why it was a good idea to cast her. They could have easily casted someone who leaned too far into the goofiness or silliness of the character, but Rachel Harris walked the line perfectly, which is why scenes like this are so iconic. Zachary and Devin both had a great dynamic with her almost Karen-like attitude, and were able to make some really funny moments just based on how they tried to negotiate with her. Probably one of her best moments was when she started dancing during Roderick's concert, which quickly caused the entire audience to rush to the front to join her. This was a great scene because it captured those embarrassing quirks that Susan had in the books, and also supported her son in the process. Overall, she was an excellent fit for Susan, being able to channel both sides of her character. Speaking of Susan, we've got her favorite favorite child, Manny. He was actually played by a pair of twins, and I can't really tell who was acting when, but they both did a great job. Specifically of making Manny look harmless, but also like a villain secretly scheming his next plan. He didn't scream or cry or anything, most of the time he was just behaving with this strangely chaotic undertone, which I think matches the books perfectly. Outside of the few key scenes where he sabotages his brothers, he's mostly just a prop for Susan to hold. But it is worth noting that in a deleted scene, Manny threatened the entire family over his missing blanket, and this is without any sound editing for me. You threw Tingy away. Well, it was an accident. Tingy says you're going to have an accident. Overall, the brothers' abilities to act completely innocent, but also like sleeper agents ready to ruin Greg's life at any moment was 10 out of 10 casting. Before we talk about probably the best casted member in the family, I did want to give Steve Zan a little bit more credit. Because while there is plenty to say about how unhinged he plays Frank, I think he really did his best work in the third movie. Just like how the writers got creative with writing Rowley's dad, Frank also had a much more complex personality than I think anyone expected. Of course, he was sociopathic for the majority of the movie. They're figurines! Although, can you really blame him when the entire family teamed up to gas Light him about the bathroom door never having a lock, they had no intention of ever telling him. They would have taken that information to the grave if it wasn't for Roderick getting caught in 4K. Roderick, can you explain what you're doing in this photo? That's not me. That's not you? Nope. In the majority of the trilogy, Frank is reserved to having these crazy outbursts for comedic effect. However, as a man somewhat insecure about his masculinity, the writers decided to naturally center the third movie's conflict around his son being too wimpy. I mean, he, he literally plans to send Greg to a boarding school. I think this was going to be a little bit too far. Now, initially, this is where he has some of his craziest moments. But it's at the end of Dog Days, where Steve pretty much manages to carry the entire movie out. By basically having this moment where after a huge disaster, he actually gives some genuinely great advice to Greg about the importance of making mistakes and learning from them. This was never in the books, so I'm glad they included it, because it shows why casting actors that could be both serious and cartoonish was so important. Everyone loves to marvel at the spectacle of Frank losing his mind, but adding this in really tied the trilogy and his character together. Lastly, we have the fan favorite casting of Devin Bostick as Roderick. Out of all the performances in this movie, this is the one that still gets talked about the most. And it's not really as much about Devin playing Roderick, as much as he just plays a teenager. Like sure, Devin definitely does a great job of recreating Roderick's lazy and rebellious tendencies, but most of the discourse surrounding him is about how he's the only normal member of the family. Of course, as an 
an older sibling, his main priority was torturing Greg, constantly playing pranks and trying to scare him about middle school. But even though that might have seemed like the only thing he liked doing, he was in no way a shallow character. There are many aspects of Roderick that make viewers sympathize with him. One of them being how whenever he's not with the family, and instead of other people his age, he was way more vulnerable and way less chill. Like the creators make it a point to show that he has zero riz, which is just funny to see consistently happen. It really rounds him out as a character who's confident in his comfort zone, but seems to always struggle a little bit outside of it. <laughs> he also has a lot of random traits that add depth to his character and performance. Devin makes the most out of every second of screen time, constantly making goofy facial expressions, as well as mannerisms that are similar to Steve's in their exaggeration. Many of his lines are also delivered as if he's drunk or high, which just adds another variable to his performance and is funny to see in a franchise like this. However, the most notable part about Roderick's screen adaptation is his passion for the band, which he is pretty much always working on. Just being average at drumming takes a huge amount of time and discipline, and yet the movie tries to frame Roderick like he's some sort of slacker. It's truly public school system propaganda. The weirdest part about Roderick's relationship with his parents is that when they find out about his party, they ban him from playing in the school talent show. Obviously, if your child lies to you and has a party when you told them not to, you're going to want to have some consequences. But banning an extracurricular activity that is both the center of your son's expression and social life is crazy. Like being in a band is one of the most healthy and wholesome hobbies a teenager can have. But nope, Hope Roderick won't find anything to replace all that free time with. This is why Roderick is seen as the only normal family member. His brother is manipulative, his dad is mostly crazy, and his mom ironically wants the family to be in her own family band, which is just straight out of a nightmare. Sure, he is a menace to Greg, but at this point it just feels like coping for living with the Sinister Six. He's even shown he's capable of getting along with Greg, which makes him even more realistic, having trouble saying anything nice to him without looking visibly uncomfortable. Tragically, their friendship leads to perhaps one of the most depressing scenes in the movies, where he finds out that Greg told her mom about the party. This is a part where both actors really hit it out of the park, with Greg's desperation and Roderick's broken trust creating a really sad scene. Greg was just trying to impress Roderick, but the circumstances caused him to be a traitor, and so Roderick drops this fire bar where real men cried, you'll always be my brother, but you'll never be my friend. Ouch. You know it's bad when it's in the official tearjerker section of TV drops. <laughs> When it's in the official tearjerker section of tvtropes.org. Fortunately, they eventually make up and spend the rest of the movie working together to trespass private property, which is really what brotherhood is all about. But seeing how Roderick has so many sides to him and just generally seems like an authentic person shows just how perfect Devin Bostick's casting really was. Growing up watching these movies, it always seemed like Roderick was the antagonist and a bad example for Greg, but it's clear to see now that he was just a pretty normal brother. As one commenter put it, Devin Bostick is an incredible actor. He doesn't portray Roderick as just being the mean older brother, but he shows real character and shows he loves his brother. You see him genuinely hurt, happy, and see him smiling and get to laugh along with him. That's something that the new Roger couldn't do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. This is strictly a positive video. We're not having none of that, which is why I'm going to say that Grace and Russell also did a great job as Fregley. Let me know what you think about these movies. Did you like the Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy? Comment below, drop a sub, and thanks for watching. I'm Lufa. You want to move?